Yeah, oh my goodness, that's hot. Yeah, Alright, so tell me what you're doing, Jack Jack. We're gonna build a solar oven. It's from the pocket guide, my side based on my side of the mountain. Okay. And it shows you all sorts of things, like plants, animal plants, poisonous plants, how to build a willow whistle. Oh yeah. So I wanted to build a solar oven. Okay. Big stuff in. All right. So take two cardboard boxes, one about an inch bigger than the other. Tell me, show me your boxes. So one, we have our the small box. Our our small box, box and our big box. Okay. So our small box already has a lid on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we should be good there. So what do we have to do? So we're gonna have to cut a hole here. Okay. Yes. A window. Okay. Window. Tape this on. Okay. Oh yeah. There's a stink Put bug under in. this bucket. Dead one. A dead stink bug? Yeah. A chicken pecked it and got stuck out. Ew, gross. Wait, uh, wait, get it all over and cover it all over these edges. Okay. You want to see. Okay, so what should we do first? So, fill the box up with something to get this on. Okay. Get it on. And stay up and then but first we have to cut the hole and put the plastic okay back. so why don't we do that first yeah. so cover the inside with your plastic so we have a plastic bag mm -hmm. let me go get some scissors So we can close this one. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we need to put aluminum foil on the inside of this one. Okay. Okay. Look at this aluminum foil. Do you see a difference? Okay, good. So the shiny side we want facing towards our food. Because we want it to reflect. Let's try to get this. Okay, so now we need to do our big one? Yes. Okay, so it said the inside and the flaps, because these are gonna be our reflectors. Okay, so we got the inside of our box all covered in foil. All right, okay, now we put the little box in and we gotta close that lid. Okay, so we put that in there. All right, and then let's take it out into the sun. Okay, now we want this pointed towards the sun, kind of at an angle. We can point it kind of like this, that would be best. So do you have any bricks or anything that we can put under here? Okay, so what we want to do is direct these to where they're uh, shining in there the most. So, uh, but we still have to catch the light. So you kind of set it up. Okay, so 
Grabbing the olive oil again, we'll grease this to make sure it doesn't stick. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So now we wait. Yeah. All right, while we're waiting for Jack's experiment with the solar oven to see if the biscuits turn out, um, I'm gonna get started on dinner tonight. Um, it's Friday. I just wanted something pretty quick and easy. I'm probably just gonna make, um, I call it like salami bread, but basically I just take any meat and cheese that I have on hand and I wrap it in um, bread dough and stick it in the oven and so I get like a, a loaf that has meat and cheese and stuff in it. Um, really easy and it makes a great quick Friday night meal. Um, but I wanted to do potato salad to go with it because we had some eggs left over from Easter still and it just sounded really good. So I have my um, cooked potatoes and my boiled eggs and then squash relish that I make every summer um, all ready to go. And then I realized that I was out of mayonnaise. So I'm gonna make mayonnaise real quick and show you how I do it. It is stupid easy. I've made mayonnaise a couple times in the past and then just kind of fell out of it. But I did Whole30 in January, which was amazing. I highly suggest it. If you're having any kind of like just health issues in general, I would totally recommend doing Whole30 just to see if you can reset your system. It was amazing. I'm probably gonna do it again. But anyways, I wound up making a lot of my own mayonnaise again because um, everything in the store had soy or preservatives or something that was not Whole30 approved and it's just super easy to make your own and I had fresh eggs on hand so why not so um, like I said really easy and I'm gonna go through that real quick and show you how it's done literally within like five minutes so let's do it all right before we get started I wanted to talk about eggs real mayonnaise is made with fresh raw eggs. Now I know that's going to freak a lot of people out, but just hear me out for a sec. I know that our girls are happy, healthy, we have a very sanitary flock, um, nobody's sickly, and so I know that the eggs coming from our flock are completely good. We don't have to worry about any weirdness. I wouldn't really do this with store-bought eggs, um, just because most eggs that come from the store have been bathed in a chemical solution to sterilize them. And most of the time that happens because the flocks are not kept in a healthy sanitary environment. Um, they're kind of wedged into tiny little cages, don't see much daylight, um, you don't get fresh air and sunshine to kill pathogens and stuff like that. So I wouldn't use store-bought eggs, especially commercial store-bought eggs. Um, but if you want to make your own mayonnaise and you do not have your own chickens, then I would highly suggest finding a local farmer and making friends with them um, for multiple reasons, not just for fresh eggs, but um, particularly a farmer who would be more than happy for you to come see their flock. Um, transparency is a huge thing. If they have no problem with you seeing what's going on behind the scenes, then that's the farmer you want because um, you know they're gonna be taking good care of their girls and they have nothing to hide, which is awesome. So farm fresh eggs, you're not gonna have to worry about um, pathogens and weird stuff if you're buying from a flock that is raised that the way a flock should be raised which is out in the fresh air out in the sunshine um, healthy clean living conditions so this starts with raw eggs and then we'll go over the ingredients in a second all right the recipe that I use comes from the nourishing traditions cookbook which I love um, I use everything except for the optional way just because I never have way on hand but if you do um, go for it because it's going to add that extra um, microbial activity in a good way that you want for healthy gut. But this starts with one whole egg, and these are room temperature. You want them at room temp. And then one egg yolk. Teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And I just eyeball this. Come on. 
Oops. I'm gonna try not to make a mess at the counter. A tablespoon and a half of lemon juice. I'm using bottled today because that's what I have. And then about mm, a quarter teaspoon-ish of um, sea salt, natural sea salt. And then about a cup of olive oil. I just eyeball it, maybe a little bit more. All right, now the part that makes this so quick and easy, an immersion blender. adjust the salt and lemon at the end um, sometimes it needs to be a little more tangy so I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon juice and a little bit more salt just to get it to my taste oh my gosh it's so good all right guys, there you go. Seriously, so easy. There is no reason for you to buy mayonnaise from the store if you don't have to. It takes five minutes. Um, if you don't have an immersion blender, you could try doing it um, with like a, a beater. Um, that might work. Or you can do it the traditional way in a food processor where you add all your ingredients and then slowly add the oil like one drip at a time. It takes quite a while that way, and that was part of the reason why I stopped making mayonnaise years ago, because it just took so long. And then I saw the stick blender method and was just blown away. So, and it's made making mayonnaise so, so easy. So, I would highly recommend it. If you are going to make your own, um, the, the only thing to keep in mind is the oil that you use. Um, because the more flavorful the olive oil, then obviously the more flavorful your mayonnaise is going to be. So, if you want a lighter tasting mayonnaise, I would use a light olive oil. Um, I use full body just because that's what I have on hand, and I like the taste. I really enjoy the olive oil um, taste in my mayonnaise, so I really like that, and it's super easy, so go make you some mayonnaise, and if you do, let me know. I want to know what you think. Yeah. All right, we're going to check on the biscuits. Biscuits under. Let's see. Sounds like a biscuit box. <laughs> Not quite. Oh, they look. Okay, so they didn't quite get hot enough to cook, and we did lose our sun. We have yes. shade. Plus, it's also not super, super hot. But let's take a look. Let's take a look. It's still mm -hmm. raw. It's still raw, but they're. You want to taste it? Well, let's no. cook it. In yeah, they're still. Is there still egg raw. inside? Okay, no, there's not. Hey, they're eatable. <laughs> they're still. They're still pretty doughy. Well, All right, so the experiment was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, they didn't quite cook all the way. I don't think we got it hot enough. Obviously, um, it wasn't like crazy, crazy hot. Um, most solar ovens I've read usually take a really long, slow cooking time. So we'll have to read up on it more and also wait for a hotter day. Um, but it was a fun experiment. So what did, did you like it, Jack? Mm -hmm. what, what did you learn about doing a solar oven? That if you're lost, if you have a so if you can make a solar oven, you can cook your bread and stuff. You can, that's right. So did you have fun making it? Mm -hmm. So do you have ideas to make it better? Mm -hmm. Like what? Maybe one more piece. Maybe or what? Maybe the maybe foil better. <sighs> then put it on the roof. And put it on the roof? Ooh, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. We do have a black roof, so that might that might help absorb some of the heat and send it up through the bottom of the oven. Mm. So, yeah? I wish you guys could try this. Can I try it? Can I try it? Yeah, sure. It's a little doughy, but good. All right, we're gonna try a little bit of this. A little doughy, not cooked, but not bad.